it's definitely rap season. So for today's video, I'll be sharing with you a So With Me featuring McCall's 7892. So if that's something that you might be interested in, please keep on watching. Hey Stitchers, your girl Chris here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel on social where it's totally cool to be obsessed with sewing. If you happen by my page and it's your first time here, then I'm happy to have you in my space. If you are an original OG and you keep on coming back week to week, thank you so much for your support. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope that you will enjoy today's content. Now for today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a Sew With Me featuring McCall's 7892, which is a wrap top and dress pattern. Now I spoke to you before about this pattern in my six wrap dresses to sew this season video. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, I'll be sure to leave the link somewhere here on the screen and definitely down below in the description box. Now McCall's 7892 has four different views, two top options and two dress options. I decided I wanted to make a view B of the pattern, which is one of the blouse options, but I wanted to go ahead and lengthen the peplum piece into a full skirt. But you guys, your girl made a huge, huge mistake. I almost gave up on this pattern, but I was able to recover in the end. So if I have sparked your curiosity and you want to know what went wrong and how I fixed it, you'll have all the information in this video. Now, just before I get into the sew along, I know you guys are curious as usual about what I'm wearing. So let me go ahead and tell you. So this is a closet core um, Cali shirt dress which I made in, I think, September last year as one of the Minerva kits. Now, if you're not familiar with the Minerva kits, Minerva is a um, company over there in the UK and they sell fabrics and notions and patterns and that sort of thing. And they do have a set of ambassadors which promote their business. Now, as part of my ambassadorship, I do get free fabrics or kit from time to time. And for this particular make, it was a full kit. So the kits come with the fabrics, the notions, the pattern, everything that you possibly need to make up a particular pattern. You can always opt out of any of the notions or if you have the pattern already, you can opt out of getting the pattern and just get the rest of the kit. Now they sent me this kit and I love this result, you guys. I feel like you hear me say that a lot about my makes. Like I love so many of the things that I make, but this fabric and pattern pairing in my view is perfection. You can never go wrong with a shirt dress, in my opinion. An animal print is like a staple in my life. And I was happy to find this animal print in my color scheme. Now I am also a Your Color Guru ambassador and Your Color Guru, for those of you who don't know, is a company that deals with um, professional color analysis. I had my colors done a couple years ago and I am a twilight winter, which means that deep, clear, cool colors are my jam. So this purple and pink combination was perfection. Now, if you're interested in getting your colors done, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the link down below and I'm going to leave my code on the screen, which is on social, which will save you 10% off your professional color analysis. Now, now that you know what I'm wearing and all the plugs have been out of the way, let's get started on today's Sew With Me video. All right, so this is the pattern that we're working on, McCall's 7892. And I actually wanna go ahead and make view B but lengthen the skirt portion into a dress. I'm still trying to decide whether I want to go ahead and hack my sleeves to create shorter puffed sleeves. But for now, whilst I think about the sleeve situation, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the pattern. Now, according to the pattern envelope, I should be choosing a size 18 at the bust because the size 18 for, for this one is a 40 inches and my bust is 41 inches or thereabout, then I should be choosing between the 18 and the 20 for the waist because my waist is 33 and a half and sometimes can go up to four, um, 34, I beg your pardon, depending on the time of the month. And now the hip portion of this pattern I don't think is detrimental, but my hips are 43 and a half, which will land me closer to the size 20. So I should be making an 18 for my bust and perhaps blending out to a 20 at the waist and the hips. However, I had a look at the finished garment measurements and based on these measurements, I actually think I want to sew 
a size 16. Now the size 16 has a finished bust of 44 inches, which will give me just about three inches of ease in this pattern. It has a finished waist of 39 inches, which will give me about five and a half to six inches of ease um, at the waistline. And as I said, the hips are not really important because this skirt, I think, is perhaps a half circle skirt. So I think I'm going to go ahead and trace out the size 16 and see where we get. All right, guys. So I've gone ahead and cut out most of my pattern pieces for view B of McCall's 7892. I did shorten my sleeves because I want a shorter sleeve. And I also want to lengthen the skirt portion of um, view B. Now, I haven't done my prep for the skirt portion just yet. And I probably should have done it before I started cutting my fabric. But I'm just so eager to start sewing up this pattern and to see how it starts coming together using this rayon fabric from Art Gallery that I've had in my stash for at least three or four years. So I'm going to go ahead now and pull out my instructions which I have right here. Um, I hardly ever follow my pattern instructions, you guys, but I figured if this is a so long, then I at least need to refer to the instructions so I can tell you guys what instructions I'm following and to share with you when and where I deviate from the pattern instructions. Now, the first step is to interface your pieces three, four, five, and six, which are your waistband pieces and your facing pieces. I haven't done that just yet, I'm going to go ahead and start working on my main bodice pieces. Now, steps two and three tell you to gather your upper shoulder of your front bodice and your waistline of your front bodice, as well as your waistline of your back bodice. Now, even before I go ahead and do this gathering, because I'm working with a rayon, even though the instructions do not include this part, I am going to go ahead and stay stitch my front neckline pieces and my back neckline piece using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So again, this is not included in the sewing directions, but I am going to go ahead and do some stay stitching just to try and prevent my bodice front piece and my neckline pieces from gaping. So I've done my stay stitching along my back bodice neckline. I started from the shoulder seam, worked my way to the center front, stopped my stitching there, went to the opposite side, started at the shoulder seam and worked my way back to my center front. I also went ahead and did my gathers at my lower bodice waistline and I did my stay stitching on my front neckline, my gathers at the shoulders and my gathers at the waist. So the next step is to pin your front bodices to your back bodice pieces. So this one is for this side and this one is for this side. Now before I adjust my gathers, I'm just going to pin at the outer shoulder line like so and I'm going to pin at my inner shoulder line oops like so and then along my shoulder line to the notch And along the other shoulder line to the notch. Now I'm going to adjust my gathers and to do that I am actually gonna tie off my gathering threads on one side. So I did two rows of gathering stitches because I find it so much easier to gather. One at three eighths of an inch and one just over the five eighths of an inch line. Now, I didn't want to go too far over because this is a rayon and I'm pretty sure that when you remove your gathering threads that you'll be able to see tiny pricks in your fabric even though I'm using a 7 to 10 needle. Now that I've tied off one side of my gathering threads, I can use the other set of gathering threads. To adjust. Um, my gathers into place so that my front bodice shoulder line lines up nicely with my back bodice shoulder line. So once I've got the right length in my gathers, I'm going to tie off 
the opposite end of my gathering stitches and that way I can adjust my gathers and try to even them out along my shoulder line. So that's it and then I'm just going to adjust my gathers. All right, once I'm happy with where my gathers are, just gonna go ahead and pin them into place. All right, now that they have been pinned, I'll take it to my sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. All right, so I stitched my seams at the shoulders and just before I go ahead and finish off the edges with my serger, I am going to go on to step number five and to stitch my bodice fronts to my bodice backs at the side seams. So next step, five eighths of an inch stitching at the side seams. All right, we're now on to step number six. So we're going to attach our um, facing pieces. So we're going to join our front facing to our back facing. So let's find the notches. In our facings and we're going to pin them together at the side seams like so and then we're going to stitch using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance once that has been done we are going to go ahead and finish the um, outer edge of our facing pieces the instructions do tell you to finish with a serger turn under a quarter inch and top stitch i'm not yet sure if i'm going to do the top stitching but i definitely will finish with my serge so that's step number six so we are now moving on to step number seven so this is my bodice front all my seams have been finished on the inside using green serger thread and press towards my back bodice I've also finished preparing my facing piece. Of course, I put my label in. Um, I've also finished along the outer edges of my facing pieces. And now I'm going to pin my front, uh, my facing piece, I beg your pardon, to my um, bodice piece. And then I'm going to stitch using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, taking care to grade my seams when I have finished stitching. And then I'll go ahead and understitch my bodice seams to my facing so that will help to roll the seam line towards the facing. So when you turn your facing um, to the wrong side of your fabric, you'll have a nice clean finish along the neckline. I did forget to mention that since I finished my seams together, I did press my bodice seam allowances towards my back neckline, but I pressed my facing seam allowances towards my front neckline just to sort of reduce the bulk at your, your seams. So one is going in one direction and the other is going in the opposite direction. So I'm just gonna pin them together at the shoulder seams first, and then I'll go ahead and pin the rest of my facing pieces. Now I do have some stray threads, particularly from my gathering and my serger, that I need to go ahead and trim away. Now, I think best practice is probably to trim your threads um, after you sew every seam, but I don't always follow best practice and it's just quicker and easier for me to sort of trim away my threads in sort of like bulk. So when I have enough threads as it were, then I'll go around and remove them, like when they start getting in my way so once i finish putting my facing together then i'm absolutely going to go ahead and trim away these um thread thread these i'm absolutely going to go ahead and trim away my thread tails my facing pieces have been attached to my bodice and now i'm going to trim away some of this seam allowance so to start i want to trim down the facing pieces quite short maybe to about an eighth of an inch in length. Once I've done that right the way around, then I'm going to go in and trim down my bodice piece to about a quarter of an inch in length. So it's just slightly longer than my facing pieces and this will help to stagger the seam allowance 
and help it to lay much flatter around the neckline. All right, so this is what we look like. I attached my facing. I went ahead and graded my seam allowances and this is what it looks like um, on the inside. And I did do the understitching. Look how neat and clean and tidy that understitching is. My advice, guys, never, ever, ever skip the understitching. It makes such a big difference to the look of your finished garments. So I'm just going to go ahead to my iron and ironing board and press my facing into place. And then I'm going to baste across the bottom edge of my facing to my bodice piece using just a long stitch. All right, since we're working on view B, we're now going to step down to step number 15, which is to prepare our tie straps. So for our tie straps, the instructions tell you to fold your tie in half, right sides together, which I'm going to do. I'm going to pin it right the way along my tie. And once that's done, I'm going to take it to my machine and stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance up the angled edge down the long edge and stopping right at the end of the long edge. That will allow me to be able to turn the tie right side out once that's done. So next step, prepare the tie pieces. All right, so my ties have been stitched together. I'm just going to go ahead and turn them inside out so that um, the right side is out and then I'll take them to my ironing board to give them a good press and then I can baste them together at the short seam. Once that is done then we can go ahead and start attaching them to our waistband. So I've turned it out and I'm just going to go back in with my stick just to get up in the corners and push those corners out as much as I can, taking care not to push through my fabric. Now this is pretty lightweight fabric, so I wanna do it gently. And then roll the seam allowance just along my stick, just to get them to open out as much as I can which will make pressing them into place just a little bit easier. So I'm gonna finish this up and head to my ironing board. All right, so it's time to start attaching our ties to our midriff pieces. So I've got my pattern piece in front of me just so that I can be sure that I am attaching my um, tie to the right side. All right, so I have pinned my tie pieces into place. So this one is my back midriff piece and I've pinned my tie on my right side looking down at the fabric. Now this is one of my front midriff pieces and I've pinned my tie on the left side looking down at the fabric. And I'm gonna go ahead now and baste both of my ties into place. My ties have been basted in place and I'm now going to take my other front bodice piece and place it right side together with my back bodice piece. Pin it into place and I'm going to stitch it together using a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. On the opposite side, I'm going to take my other side bodice piece, side midriff piece, I beg your pardon. Pin it together. And then I'm going to stitch them both together using a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once my midriff pieces have been done and opened up, this is what you should have. You should have your one tie sandwiched between your back and your side like so. And your other tie should be at your center front piece like so. So this is what our midriff pieces look like. I've sewn them together and I did go ahead and finish my seams and press them towards my um, midriff back. Even though this is not required because the midriff section is actually faced. Because I'm working with this lightweight rayon fabric, 
I do want to preserve my garment over time. And with washing and ironing and whatnot over time, I just wanted to make sure that my inner edges don't start unraveling. So I have gone ahead and finished my seam allowances, even though it's technically not required. So my next step now is to pin my midriff piece to my bodice piece. So I've attached my main midriff piece to my bodice piece, right sides together, like so. And I've also gone ahead and prepared my midriff facing pieces off camera. I stitched them together in the same way I did my midriff main pieces, surged off my seams, but instead of pressing them towards the back, this time I've pressed them towards the front. That way, when we sandwich our midriff pieces together, one set of seam allowances will go to the front, the other set towards the back, and that will help to reduce any bulk at our waistline seam. All right, before we continue, I just realized that I skipped a step. Now, on your facing piece for your midriff, you need to go on and mark in a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance along your lower midriff piece. I'm going to go ahead and use my Nancy Zimmerman gauge, which you can find in my Amazon storefront, and my chuckle liner, just to measure and mark the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So this fabric is very shifty, so I'm trying to hold it as steady as I can and to mark my lines um, pretty lightly so as not to distort my fabric too much. Once I have the markings in place, then I'll take it to my sewing machine, not my sewing machine, sorry, my serger, and I'm going to trim off a quarter inch from my bottom um, seam allowance and then press up a third of an inch. I just find it so much easier and quicker to get my finished three eighths of an inch seam allowance along my bottom waistline by doing it this way. So again, I'm gonna mark it in with my charcoal liner first, then I'm gonna trim off a quarter inch using my serger, which helps me to get a more accurate trim in my opinion. And it also has the effect of finishing off my raw edges so that I can preserve my fabric once it has been washed and pressed several times over. So I'm gonna just finish this up and then head to my serger. All right, so this is my midriff facing piece. I did go ahead and press it up, finished off my edges, trimming off a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and this is what she looks like on the inside. So we're now going to attach our facing piece to our bodice front piece. And we are going to attach the right side of the facing piece to the wrong side of the bodice piece. So I'm first going to match up my side seams right here and pin it into place. Then I'm going to match up my other side seam pin it into place and once I have my side seams pinned then I'll go ahead and pin the rest of the midriff facing into place. Once it has all been pinned into place then I'm going to go ahead and stitch. Um, let me show you. Oops, where's the front? Now your midriff pieces will overlap your center front piece by five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So once we put our front pieces together, like so, we also need to go ahead and pin along the short edge. Now, because we have turned up the three eighths, uh, the five eighths of an inch seam allowance right here, then your midriff facing is not going to be the same length as your midriff piece. When we sew it together, we're going to sew up from your facing point, five eighths of an inch, and then across your entire bodice piece using five eighths of an inch, and then down on the opposite side using five eighths of an inch. We'll then grade and clip our corners and turn our midriff pieces right side out. Right, so this is what our midriff piece looks like. I did go ahead and finish my midriff pieces again because I want this make to last a very long time and this fabric is quite lightweight. Now, if you're using a heavyweight fabric, I would absolutely recommend grading your seam allowances. 
So you'd cut your um, facing piece to about one eighth of an inch, and then you'd cut your main bodice piece to about a quarter of an inch just to reduce bulk at your waistline. But because my fabric is so lightweight, then I just went ahead and finished off my edges. Towards my center front, I did use my pink and shears, and I have graded my seam allowances right here just because um, this piece is not as bulky, and I, I wanted to preserve, as it were, uh, my seam allowances for when I attach my skirt. So I didn't want to finish them off with my serger. So I used my pinking shears instead. So the next step is to turn out your facing pieces. So I'm just going to push the tips of my, um, sorry, I'm just going to push the corners of my um, midriff pieces out on that side. And then I'm going to go all the way to the other side. And I'm just going to turn it out and push it up. Now, this is the piece that has your tie end attached. So I'm just going to pull it out and make sure that it hasn't been caught in my seams. So this is what it looks like. And I'm going to go to my ironing board now and just press down both my main midriff piece and my facing midriff, midriff piece down towards where your skirt would be attached. All right, my lovies. So my bodice piece has been completed. I did go ahead and press down both sides of my midriff piece, and this is now what we have. I mean, just look at this. This is going to be so cute, you guys. So, so cute. All right, so now that we've got this complete, I think the next step would be to move on to the sleeves. All right, so this is what we're looking like so far. Can you see how nicely my neckline edge lays? Um, it's kind of pulling up near the wrap and that's because we haven't yet attached the skirt. And so um, this piece right here is not going to um, roll out how it should. So if it looks like it's sort of bunching up at my waistline, it's because we haven't added the weight of the skirt just yet. But I did want you to see how it's looking. So I have more than enough room for my girls. There's no pulling and dragging at the bust area. And it's not sort of like gaping out at the neckline. I pulled it up a little bit just to demonstrate. But if I were to cross it back over and fix it, then you can see how lovely this looks around the neckline. I'll turn to the back just so that you can see. And now we can move on to our sleeves. I think I said I was going to work on my sleeves next, but I hadn't cut out my skirt pieces um, when I was cutting out my bodice pieces. And you guys, I made a massive, massive mistake. It turns out that I don't have enough fabric to cut my skirt pieces as intended by the pattern. Now the skirt pieces are um, a quarter circle skirt, but my fabric is not sufficient for me to cut out both my front and my back skirt pieces. Um, at full length. Now, if I were to make a top, then I would have enough fabric to cut out the uh, peplum for the top version, but I really, really wanted a dress. So instead of making the quarter circle skirt that is included in the pattern, I've just gone ahead and cut out um, two rectangular pieces, which I will use to create a gathered skirt. Now, this is nowhere in the instructions. This is not what is intended by the pattern. This is not what I intended to do, but push has come to shove right now. And it's either I settle for a gathered um, skirt or I'm going to have to make a blouse. And I really didn't want to make a blouse from this pattern. So unfortunately, my sew along has quickly gone down the drain because I did not cut out all of my pattern pieces at the same time. So I would absolutely recommend that if you're going to, to make this pattern, as a matter of fact, if you're making any pattern, it's probably wise to cut out all of your pattern pieces at once. That way, if you need to move your pieces around to make your fabric work for you, then you have a better chance of getting your pieces cut out than when you do it like me and cut out your, your pattern pieces bit by bit. So again, this is not what is intended by the pattern, but this is what I have resorted to simply because I made a boo-boo when cutting out my fabric. So since that is the case, I'm going to go ahead and attach my back skirt which has been cut on the fold to my front skirt pieces which have been cut too. So I'm going to stitch them together at the side seams using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then finish off my side seams 
then I could go about gathering and attaching it to my bodice. All right, everybody. So I started preparing my skirt pieces by sewing my side seams together using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance um, following instruction step number 40. Even though you're using a circle skirt, you'll do the exact same thing and sew your front side seam to your back side seam and finish off your edges. Now, we will move on to step number 42 in my case because I do not have to stay stitch um, my upper skirt pieces. If you're using the circle skirt pattern, you absolutely should stay stitch your circle skirt pieces because your waistline will be cut on the bias and it will easily stretch out if you skip this step. So pay attention to step number 41 and stay stitch your skirt pieces and then join me in step number 42, which is to finish off your um, front raw edges. I did mine with a serge first, and then I just turned a narrow hem by turning in my serged um, edges twice. So I serged it, turned it in once and pressed, and then turned it back in again and pressed. So I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and stitch a narrow hem right down the way my skirt front all right so i finished the front of my skirt by hemming it with a narrow hem and this is what it's looking like now because again i'm now making a gathered skirt instead of my circle skirt i am going to go ahead and run two lines of gathering stitches from the center front to my side seam then from my side seam right across my back and then from the opposite um side seam to my center front I like to break up my gathering stitches in this way because it's easier to gather it than to use one long continuous stitch and also it lessens the chance of your threads breaking so i am going to gather my skirt you are not going to gather your skirt you're going to wait for me and then we'll attach our skirt to our bodies together i did forget to mention that your instructions have you at step number 42 hem your center front and it also suggests hemming your bottom edge of your skirt at this point now i wouldn't recommend you hem your skirt just yet especially if you're making the circle skirt now because circle skirts are cut on the bias they tend to stretch out and it's always recommended that you hang your garment for at least 24 hours and allow your hem to settle um, before going ahead and tidying up the length of your hem and then hemming it thereafter so I definitely would not recommend hemming your skirt. Now, if you can wait, then I would suggest just hemming the center front of your um, skirt and leaving your hem at least for 24 hours after you complete your garment to allow your hem to settle. All right, so grab your bodice piece. This is my bodice piece. And grab your skirt piece. And we're going to attach our skirt to our bodice. So make sure you have your ties out of your way and you're only going to attach your skirt to your bodice um, main edge. So you're going to line up the hemmed edge of your skirt with your notch like so. Pin it into place. That way when you complete your skirt, you'll have a nice clean edge right here at your body's front pieces you're going to repeat that on the opposite side taking care to avoid your tie strap again i'm lining up my bodice my skirt front with my bodice front and i want one clean edge right at the bodice front i'm going to pin it into place now you go ahead and attach the rest of your skirt to your bodice if you cut your pieces correctly and if you remember to stay stitch then your skirt should fit quite nicely into your bodice without any stretching gathering pleating anything like that it should lay smooth and flat mine again has been gathered because i made a mistake and so I'm now going to go ahead and attach my gathers to my bodice, pin it in place, and then go to my machine. And we're stitching our bodice and our skirt pieces 
using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm back. I have attached my skirt to my bodice and this is what it will look like. Now yours will look similar to this but not the same because you will not have any gathering at your um, waistline seam. Yours will be nice and flat and smooth. This is what it looks like on the inside and we will eventually have to fold our facing piece over our stitch line and either edge stitch or slip stitch it by hand just to finish off the inner facing. But I feel a little bit more relaxed now that I have a skirt on my bodice and so I can get back now to doing the sleeves. So we're going to backtrack in our pattern instructions now and deal with the sleeves. Now two things to note, I have hacked my sleeve pattern. I have shortened my pattern and I have also added four inches of width throughout my pattern so that I can have a gathered sleeve at the um, sleeve head and also some gathering along the hemline of my sleeve. However, I'm still going to follow the instructions as if I were making view D's sleeve in this pattern. Now for view D, the instructions have you run some ease stitching along the top of your, your sleeve head between the small circles so you want to mark out your small circles and then you're going to run an ease stitch in two separate lines throughout the top of your sleeve now for my ease stitching i like to use a 3 8 of an inch seam line and again just outside the 5 8 of an inch seam line and i like to use the longest stitch length provided on my machine which is a stitch length of six now because i have this pattern i'm actually going to do my ease stitching from my back notch right around to my front notch doing the same two rows of ease stitching um, on my sleeve head once that has been completed then we can move on to the next step all right so we need to finish off our sleeve casing and to do that we need to turn in a quarter of an inch seam allowance at your sleeve hem now because i've surged my hem then that gives me a good indication of a quarter inch. If you haven't surged your sleeve hem or if your serger settings are not the same as mine, then you might need to go in and mark off your quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now I want to press as close as possible to the edge because I don't want to undo the guideline at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance that I had pressed already in a previous step. Once that is done and all of my raw edges have been turned in on themselves, then I can just go back along my guideline and press it into place. I'll do this right the way around my sleeve and then I can go to my sewing machine and run an edge stitch right along the edge of the hem right here, leaving about an inch and a half or so so that I can put my elastic through the casing. We have completed our sleeve casing and it's time for the elastic. Now grab some quarter inch elastic and the instructions tell you to measure your wrist and then add one inch and that will give you the measurement for your elastic. Since I shortened my sleeve, I'm actually going to measure my bicep and add an additional inch so that I can get the length of my elastic. Once we know what our elastic length is, then we can introduce it into the casing of our sleeve hem. I've cut two pieces of elastic 14 inches in length because my bicep is just about 13 inches. Now before we put it into the casing, I do like to mark my elastic both on the same side so that I can make sure when it comes through my channel that my elastic didn't twist. Now there are lots of fancy tools that you can use to thread your elastic through your casing but I am just going to settle for a safety pin because it works wonders for me. Now there's nothing more annoying than when you're going through a casing with a safety pin and it pops open and your pin gets stuck in your fabric. That is a disaster, you guys. So to prevent that from happening, I do like to use just a little bit of washi tape and secure it around the head of my pin, just like so. And since it's a washi tape, it'll come off pretty easily once I'm done. All right, so I'm going to grab my sleeve. And I'm just going to start working my way around. Actually, we should probably do it the opposite direction because my sleeve seams have been pressed to the back. 
So I'm just going to go ahead now and push my safety pin right the way around my casing. Now this is just a little bit fiddly and because my fabric is so like lightweight, um, it's just a little bit challenging to get it through. But with a little time and some patience, then I know we'll make it to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and put my elastic in both of my sleeve casings and then I'll be back to show you what it looks like. The elastic is in and I've just secured the ends with a pin because at this point the instructions will have you finish off your elastic by sewing maybe like a zigzag stitch to secure both ends of the elastic and then finishing off your casing. But I'm not going to do mine just yet because I'm not 100% confident about the length of my elastic. Different types of elastic have different, different amounts of stretch and I prefer to finish off my elastic once I'm in a position to try my sleeve on in my dress. So for now, I'm gonna stick a pin in this portion of the sleeve construction and go ahead and set in both of my sleeves to my bodice pieces. Grab your dress piece and grab your sleeve. Now place both pieces right sides up. We're gonna look for the underarm seam of our, of our um, sleeve and we're going to attach it first of all to the underarm seam of our dress right sides together. So I'm just trying to line up my seams and then pin them right sides together. Just pick a pin like so. Now at the top of your dress where your shoulder seam is, you then want to find your notch in your sleeve. This is mine. And I'm going to turn the top um, shoulder line over my sleeve so they are now right sides together. And I want to pin my shoulder seam right at my sleeve notch. Just like so. Once I've secured both of those points, then I want to go around and pin the rest of my sleeve in place. So you're going to pin your notches first. Your front notches are demarcated by a single notch. You're going to secure that first, like so, and then pin in place below the notch. I'm going to turn my dress over and do the same thing for my back sleeve and my back dress. So I'm going to find the double notch on the back. Now, I don't want my gathering stitches caught up in my notches, so I'm just trying to move them out of the way. All right, so I'm going to line up my double notches like so and pin them into place. Once I have those pins in place, then I'm going to need to adjust my gathering stitches to the length of my bodice pieces so i gathered my sleeve too tightly so i'm going to need to remove some of the gathering like so so that my sleeve now will fit into the arm side of my bodice once i'm comfortable i'm going to continue pinning my sleeve into place then I'll take this to my sewing machine, stitch at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance right the way around. Then I'll stitch again at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance right around. And then finish off my sleeve seams with my serger. So the sleeves are in and I stitched it at 5 eighths of an inch, again at 3 eighths of an inch. And then I finished around the edges with my overlocker. So I do have quite a lot of loose threads and gathering threads that I need to go ahead and tidy up. And then I can move on to my next step. We are almost at the end of our sew along. The next step will be to finish off your inner midriff facing. So I have opted to just press mine into place using some stitch witchery to hold it in place so that I can take it to my machine and do a edge stitch right along the outside of my lower midriff piece. Now you can always choose to slip stitch it into place instead, which will require some hand sewing. But because this fabric is so lightweight, 
um, I just figured that it might give me a neater and tidier finish if I just go ahead and do um, the edge stitching on the outside of my midriff piece. So I'm going to go ahead to my machine now and do that. Once that's done, the final step will be for you to level back off your hemline and then turn your narrow hem. Again, I use the gathered skirt, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish the raw edges with my serger, and then I'm going to turn a narrow hem um, at my hemline. That's a wrap, folks. See what I did there? <laughs> oh my god i think i'm so funny but i'm really not all right you guys that is a wrap on my sew with me tutorial now you would have seen the mistakes that i made for this make and how i went about recovering from them and the end result you guys i could not be happier if i tried i really love this dress and i love how it fits me now i did do a full bust adjustment tutorial right here on my channel which featured this pattern and i shared with you how to go about increasing the cup size in my case from a sewing b cup size to a sewing c cup size so if you need to do a full bust adjustment on this tutorial i'm going to go ahead and drop the link for that tutorial right here in the um video and down in the description box so that you can check it out i promise you guys it's not that difficult i know a lot of people kind of shy away from doing full bust adjustments but i promise you after you've done it once or twice it becomes almost like second nature to you if you have a cup size that's bigger than a B cup, I absolutely recommend that you give it a go. Now that is all I wanted to share with you for today's video and I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up, drop me some comments down below, let me know what you think of my finished product, do you think that the gathered skirt works out nicely or do you think I should have just made the view B top as is? Let me know if you plan to sew this pattern or any of the other wrap dress patterns that I featured in my wrap dress video, or as a matter of fact, any wrap dress pattern at all. Wrap dresses are trending right now. Everybody and their mama is making a wrap dress. So let me know whether you're one of those people who have caught the wrap dress bug. Now, if you have made it this far into the video and you have not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. You can just tap the subscription button and turn your notifications on so you never miss any of my upcoming videos. Subscriptions cost you absolutely nothing, but it does guarantee you a spot right here with me in my YouTube sewing community, which of course I absolutely appreciate. So that's all I wanted to share with you guys today. I'm hoping to be back on Friday and I think Friday's video will be five top tips to level up your sewing. So again, if that's something that you might be interested in, be sure to hit that subscription icon and turn your notifications on. So until then, stay calm, stay cool, stay safe, and you guys know it, absolutely keep sewing. Peace.